Well, welcome to our used 2015 Crusader 30BH. We're gonna start right in the back bumper here. So you just got that little cotter pin, you're just gonna pull that up so you can pull out that bumper cap. Reach in a little bit, we got your sewer hose in there. So once this guy's fully extended, I believe it's about 15, 20 feet long. Just take note of all these ears in the adapter here. That's all you'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. And we're just keeping it stored in the bumper here just to help keep things that clean as possible. So just take note of that one little hole right there on the cap. I'm gonna press that in, it'll line up. And then you can just drop that cotter pin back into place, just prevents it from flying out on you going down the highway. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you got these stabilizer jacks here. So what they're gonna do is they'll just come down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up, and that'll get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you can see you got in the unit right now. One part of your sewer system right here. So basically you just got this little cap here, just presses in, pops off of there. Then you can see it's got the same style of ears that your sewer hose had. So that'll be attached in the same way. Just press it onto there, turn it, locks into place, and there you go. Drain valve's just right up above it. Pull that and drain out this tank. This tank is filled from your back bathroom here. Down towards the front. Get this one little port here. So as you pop that open, you can see it's got that one little notch in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with this notch right there. Press your power cord into place, give it a little eighth turn, locks it into place there. And then the threaded collar in the back to really lock it down. Following that cord vamp back, we got a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are gonna have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. Now we do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter to go down to a standard household outlet. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you got the power to do so. Hot oh, water tank right here, so you get that one little keyway there, just line it up, pops on open. All of your controls for turning it on are just inside the unit. Before you turn it on though, you just want to hit this pressure relief valve right there, make sure that shot of water comes out. That bit of water coming out is just letting you know it is full, it's safe to fire it up, and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Straight down below that, we got your low flame drains here, so you got a hot and a cold line there. So basically, you're just going to take that valve, open it up, allow it to drain out the water from the water lines throughout the unit. The purpose of that would be winterizing or if you're, looking, if you're leaving the trailer for a while and just don't want your water going stale or stagnant. City water connection on the right there, so you're just going to take a water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the water lines throughout the unit. Beside that, we got a freshwater tank port, so you just take the same water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill up your freshwater tank. You know that tank is full once it starts spitting water out of that vent there or by washing the monitor panel inside. The drain for that tank is just right up front here. Just open up this little valve, drains itself out. Simple as that. Below your water connections, we've got this little port here. So you got the little key just like that guy there. You open it up, get access to a shower up top here. So I'll show you that hose in a second. Battery disconnect there. So I believe with it out, that is the battery turned on. With it in, that's the battery turned off from the system. Cable and satellite out, or sorry, your satellite outlet in the right here and cable on the left. All right, so just a coax cable is gonna plug into there, fire up your TV location. Black tank flush in the center here. So you may notice over time you've gone, you've dumped your black tank, you know for a fact it is empty, but your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. What you can do is just take your water hose, plug it into there, open up that black valve, turn on the water, and that'll just flush out that tank for you getting rid of any sort of debris. Yeah. Inside the storage compartment here, just holds up with the little magnet latch there. We do have your shower hose out here. So it's just a standard garden hose end. Just gonna push that collar back, press the hose into place, and there you go. Once you're done, it is good practice just to stretch out the hose, make sure that all the water drains itself out, just so that you're not, you know, storing it inside of the trailer. Up on the wall here, you got a bypass for your hot water tank. So for winterizing, you just flip that up to bypass, drain out the hot water tank. In the back there, you've got your water pump con or your water pump inlet selection. So normal is gonna be drawing out of your fresh water tank. Winterize is gonna draw out of this hose, so this hose would just go into your antifreeze jug, run it through all of your faucets, and there you go. So this compartment here doesn't lock, right? Because your propane is in there, you cannot lock your propane compartment. Right? So your changeover is just on the other side. So currently we're drawing off that other tank, so this one we're just gonna leave B for right now. Other end of your sewer connection here. So on the left, you got a black valve. On the right, you got a gray. So your gray valve is controlling your gray tank, which is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. So your kitchen sink and your shower, sorry. And then the black valve is controlling your toilet. So when it comes to dumping your tanks, you're gonna to wanna to do that black first, allow that to drain out completely. Then you'd probably wanna do that back bedroom or yeah, that back bathroom. Now once you're done that back bathroom, come back over here and just finish off with that gray valve on the right. Typically gonna be your cleanest water, just help keep that hose as clean as possible. Around the front, you get the little lights here so you can see what you're doing. Landing legs, sort of track, go down, extend to go up. 
storage compartment. Just holds up with this little T-latch here. You can get access to your battery and storage. compartment so as we open that up you can see up in the top there you get your little change over there so you can see up in the top it's currently green letting you know there's propane in the system arrows pointing off of this line so we're running off of this line so we'll use this tank okay. now if this if that ind indicator were to go red it's just letting you know there's no longer any propane in the system at that point just flip over to the other tank draw off of that one while you get this one filled other under your storage compartments so in here you've got a light up on the wall, cable and satellite outlet there, power outlet. So if you want a TV out here, you can do so. Here's that park adapter I was telling you about. So your short cord 30 amp into there, 15 amp into a standard household outlet, and the water hose that we provide for you, as well as a jack for running all of your stabilizers. GFI protected outlet there. Right here we just got your stove vent, so of course propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you just want to make sure that this guy's opened up, the two little ears on the side there, and your fan inside turned on so that you can evacuate all those fumes. Once you're done going traveling, you just want to make sure these two ears come back in, just to lock it back in place. Here we've got your fridge vent, so it's really just a service port, nothing back there for you to worry about. Below that we've got your furnace, so it does get hot, just make sure nothing's blocking that. And then in the very back of the unit we just got your spare tire there. Now we'll make our way inside. As we open up the door, you get this one little slot right there. It's going to line up that T-handle, hold the door open for you. And we're just going to grab this one handle and pull it out. Flip that last step over, make our way inside. So right when you get in and on your left is your fire extinguisher, some standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Up on the wall here, we've got your light switches. So on the right there, you get your hallway center. You get uh, your awning light outside, I think. And on the left there, you get your living room lights. Right. For your awning, just press and hold extend and that awning will make its way out. And once that awning's fully extended, you'll see a little white flap at the end come down. You'll also see the gray of the metal tube. Once you see that, you're gonna wanna stop. Right. So it's a little sticky right now, but there it is. If it were to start raining, it's probably going to run right off, but if you want to get yourself a bit more shade, you can just grab either arm and just pull it in a bit, lock down that knob, you can see that changes the pitch of the awning, and get you a bit more shade. If you like that, you can do the same thing at the front. Before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure they're back out fully extended, just that we're not running the risk of bending them. So we'll just press and hold the track, we'll make its way back in. And just one more thing to keep in mind with it, it does just catch the wind. So if you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you're gonna to wanna to bring it back in anyways. There we go. Above that, we got your thermostat. Let's just press that mode button there, or wake up, come to fan. So for your fan speed, you're typically gonna to wanna to just leave it on auto, unless you're looking to just move some air, in which case you can select high or low. Otherwise, auto. After fan, if we hit mode again, come into cool. So here it'll actually turn on the air conditioner. There you go. Right. So once we can, once we open this thing up and we get to the air conditioner, I'll show you. There's a little louver you can control, open it up or close it off, just to control whether you're actually dumping air into the living room or sending it throughout the ducting. Right. After cool, if we hit mode again, it'll come into furnace again, just selecting our temperature with plus minus there. It'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on the furnace. Now with it being a used unit, you shouldn't have to deal with a new furnace smell, but if you do get a bit of a smell throughout the unit the first couple of times you use that furnace, it is kind of normal. Okay. After furnace, we just hit mode again, come down into that on off and turn itself off. Down from there, you got your converter here, so just press it on the left, it pops on open, get all of your breakers down the middle there. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's going to sit in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on. And then on the top side, we got all of your fuses. Okay. Little but white box down here is your propane detector. So propane's heavier than air, it'll sit on the floor. This guy will detect it and start going off just like a smoke detector would. In the bathroom here, so the light just is just in on your right. Beside that, we've got your hot water tank controls. So on the right, that flame is your hot water. Turning it on with propane. Turn that switch on, it'll fire up the propane. So sit right here, you can hear it fire right up. If this red light in the center were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, just off and back on to reset it. On the left side there, you got your electricity, turns it on with hydro. 
And then your monitor panel here, so in the bottom corner is your pump. Turn on that switch, turns on your water pump, drawing out of the fresh water tanks, pressurize your lines. Monitor system, we got battery, so because we're plugged in right now, we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. For your fresh tank, as you fill that up, it'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black, your gray, and your galley. Your galley is gonna be that back bathroom, and gray is gonna be your kitchen sink, your bathroom sink, and your shower, and black is going to be your toilet. Right. GFI protected outlet back here, so test on the bottom, reset on top. Medicine cabinet, hot and cold water at the sink, of course. A little bit of storage below, just being mindful of our drains and our water lines. The shower, hot and cold water, of course. The standard head and hose. And the toilet, it's just got its own little flusher right in the front there. Towel rack previously installed to the previous owner. And then the roof vent, just turn that knob to open it up. Hit that switch in the corner, turns on the fan. Simple as that. So now we'll just head up into that front bedroom. Light switch is just in on the wall. So along the side here, your blinds throughout the unit. Pretty well just sit where you leave them. All right, storage across the top, a little bit of closet space, whatever you want to call it. Above the head, you just get, each got a little light there. Same thing over here. A bit more closet space. A bit more storage. If we pick up the foot of the bed, get access to a little storage compartment there. Up on the wall, we got a carbon monoxide alarm. Let's see how that works. Your antenna here, just turn this to open it up. And once it gets up, once it gets up all the way, it'll just kind of stop in place, just like that. And then you can just turn this dial to turn it around, find your best signal. Once you're done, just make sure those two arrows line back up, and then we can bring it back down. Lining up those arrows just ensures that the V channel that it sits in is lined up properly, and you're not going to poke a hole in it. There we go. Behind me, we got a bit more closet space here. Right. Drawers. So this wall here is actually solid, so you can mount the TV, power outlet, cable and satellite outlet for it. You also get the roof vent here. And now into the living room, we got your slide out switch right up in the wall here. So just press and hold out and the slide will make its way out. Entertainment area here, you get the storage above it, both sides. 12 volt outlet, as well as a antenna outlet for turning that antenna on, just hit on that switch there, get that green light letting you know it's on. Power outlet, cable and satellite outlet, TV mount below that. So there would have been a stereo here at one time. There is kind of your connections for it, and this is going to be your speaker outlets for it as well. A little bit more storage below. And the slide right up top, you just get that one little light there, a bit more storage across the top. Right. For the couch, I do believe it folds out, so we just take the bottom cushions, throw them off to the side. Grab the sandal here up and out. Fold this guy over. Let's see, you get your little bed there. All right. Once you're done, just grabbing the foot, flipping it over, up and in. Put the cushions back into place. There you go. Three dinette, same sort of light there, right? Two sides, storage underneath. And then in your kitchen, you get hot and cold water at your sink, of course. The cover is just plastic, so nothing hot on there. Storage across the top. Microwave here is pretty standard, just like home. Not much I can teach you there. You get the light as well as the vent for your fan or your stove. So of course that's the fan that you want turned on with that vent outside opened up so we're evacuating our fumes. Turn the knob over to light, hit the sparker, and she fires right up.
for the stove. You're just gonna open that up, turn this knob on the right here over to pilot and press and hold. Grab a lighter and then right in the back, we'll get that pilot light going. Once you get it going, you just wanna hold that knob in for another few seconds. Then you can release and it'll hold itself. Then you just turn up to your desired temperature and she fires right up. Once you're done, just turn it back down to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light for you before you go traveling or if you're leaving the trailer for a while, you just wanna make sure it's right off. Underneath the sink beside the stove, you got your storage here. Again, being mindful of our drains there. Three drawers here, as well as one below the stove. Underneath your fridge here is just to return our free furnace. So you just wanna make sure it's not blocked off. For the fridge, you just get that one power button right there. And there you go. It is fully automatic. If you take AC power away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. So there's your fridge and freezer up top. Press and hold that power button, light goes out and that's it turned off. And storage across the back here, so I guess like a little closet space. All right. Straightforward and simple. And then into the back bunk room. So inside, just on the left, we've got your light switch as well as your slide out switch. So just press and hold out and the slide will make its way out. And while we're waiting on that, right above our heads, we've got your smoke detector here. So just like the other slide, once this one's fully extended, you'll just hear some clicks from the motors. And there you go. This top bunk, as you see, does fold up. You just got the travel latches on either side. Just undo those. It falls down into place. You get the little light up here. Once you're done, just picking it up, sucking it back in place. Do recommend traveling with it up just so that you prevent this sort of damage and you got the other sleeping area the drawers across the bottom do you have a tv back here as well cable and satellite outlet power outlets a little bit more storage there and the bathroom here so like shows just in on the wall get a little medicine cabinet here hot and cold water again same sort of storage below with the same toilet the flusher right in the front there so if you got any other questions on the unit, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.